morning, church, and welcome to worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church here in Greensboro, North Carolina, where we lift every voice with the joy of Jesus. I'm Pastor Matt Can of Kiesecker, and wherever you're worshiping from today, I'm glad that God has gathered you into this community to worship together this morning as the people of God. It is the sixth Sunday in the church season of Easter, and in our gospel story today, we hear Jesus' words to his disciples from a couple days before his crucifixion and resurrection. We hear again from the 14th chapter of John. It's part of what's called the farewell discourse. It's Jesus' long goodbye to his disciples before he leaves them in the earthly way that they had known him, and uh, they enter into a new season as the people of God. There's a lot that we can hear from Jesus' words uh, to his disciples as we also are living into a new season of what it looks like to be the church and a new season of our lives as the people of God. And as Jesus says to his disciples in the story we hear today, God promises to be with us and to send us a helper, an advocate, a counselor, the Holy Spirit on whom we can call and who journeys alongside us. God promises not to abandon God's children and we have the same promise. And so we enter into our worship today clinging to that promise that in our baptism we are claimed as beloved children of God. And we gather in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, one God, the mother of us all. Amen. God has given to all nations the repentance that leads to life. Let us come with repentant hearts to the God who makes all things new. Gracious God, we confess to you all the ways in which we dismiss the resurrection news. We are slow of heart to believe. We turn from others and retreat in fear. Come into our locked rooms and breathe into us your forgiving spirit. Reawaken our trust and strengthen our hope that we may be witnesses to your saving power. Amen. Peace be with you, my siblings in Christ. In your baptism, God has given you a spirit of adoption. God promises not to leave you abandoned. In Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and welcome this freedom as a gift. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share Christ's peace with one another.
The Lord is with you. Let us pray together. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands. Nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for good, conduct in Christ, may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for our sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through the water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel story today comes from the gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees her nor knows her. But you know her, because she abides with you, and she will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. 
In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live in you. You will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace are yours from our God who comes alongside us when we call, and from our Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Whenever I hear this scripture that I just read, these words from Jesus to his disciples, I immediately go back to about 12 years ago, my first summer when I was hired to be a camp counselor for the summer at Camp Lutheridge. And at the very beginning of the summer, there's a couple of weeks of training, staff orientation time, before we're thrown in there with the kids and sleeping in cabins and doing all the camp activities for the summer. There's orientation when the staff learn what it is to be a counselor. And part of that orientation time every year happened when one of the camp directors who is my mom, Pastor Mary, would round up all those eager young people who had signed up to be counselors and sit them down and she led a Bible study. A Bible study on the word counselor. What does it mean to be a counselor? And she based that study around this scripture, John 14, that we hear today. When Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. That's the word I read this morning, advocate. The Greek word is parakleton, parakleton. And that word can be translated in a whole bunch of different ways. If you actually, you could do this online, or if you had... Uh, different physical uh, Bibles of different translations, she would do this as part of her study. Pastor Mary would ask people to look up in uh, different versions of the Bible, translate this word, parakleton, in all kinds of different ways. You get advocate, like we heard this morning. Other translators use the word helper. Others use mediator or intercessor. Some translations say, counselor. I will ask the Father and he will send you another counselor. Paracleton, uh, literally para means alongside, like parallel, and kleton means to call. So the, the paracleton, or maybe you've heard paraclete, that's Latin. The paraclete means the one who is called alongside. Jesus is telling his disciples that he's going to leave them in the way that they have known him. They're not going to be physically in bodies close together anymore. And that's a hard and scary thing for the disciples to hear. But Jesus says, I am leaving, but I am not leaving you orphaned. I am giving you one who will come alongside you when you call. So Pastor Mary used to always say every summer to those counselors, that's your job description this summer, to be the advocate, to be the helper, to be the mediator, to be the one who comes alongside when they are called. To be the one for those children at summer camp who, because you are there, they know that they are not orphaned. Their parents dropped them off for a week, but they're not abandoned. They have one 
on whom they can call who will come alongside. That's the literal biblical definition of counselor. That's the job description. So Pastor Mary used to say, maybe you didn't know you were getting into this, but if you were looking for a summer job where you would literally do the things that Jesus does, you're in the right place. This is even more powerful for me now as I have my own kids who are not too far away from the age of sending them off to overnight summer camp. And I have daughters who, when they get scared in the night when they need something, they call out my name. From, our, from their room, I hear, Mommy, Daddy. And they know they have someone who will come alongside them when they call and will be there to help. And I can't imagine dropping my kids off anywhere and leaving them abandoned or orphaned without a counselor, without one on whom they can call. The promise is for us as well. In our baptism, we are claimed as beloved children of God. And we hear the voice of God from the heavens say to us, In you I am well pleased. God promises in all things to not abandon us, but gives us the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Helper, the Mediator, the one who comes alongside when we call. I feel like we can identify in some ways with what those disciples were feeling on that night in the upper room, that Thursday night when they were gathered around the table with Jesus. And Jesus was telling them, you're gonna be entering into a new world. The life we've known together, the way that we have been a community and the people of God together is going to look different. And it's going to be scary. And it's going to be uncertain. And it will be hard. But I will send my counselor. I will send the one on whom you can call to be with you and I will not leave you abandoned or orphaned. We're living through something disrupting right now. And, you know, I think that when those disciples were listening to Jesus, they probably were thinking, okay, how long do we have to go through this before it's going to go back to the way it was before? And I know that's what I've been thinking through this whole pandemic time when we've been worshiping like this and living in uh, stay-at-home times and watching all the uncertainty and fear and disease and death that's rampant in our world, I felt like this is something we have to get through. And then we're going to come back to the way it was. And we all are coming into a new recognition, I think, that this isn't a season that we are going to get through and then go back. This is the new season. This is our new reality. And it's not going to look the same as it was before. And there's a lot that's hard and uncertain and scary about that. But we have the promise of the one who will come alongside us when we call. And in the Holy Spirit, God shows up for us in real ways, most especially through the community that we share as the people of God.
in the same way that Pastor Mary, the camp director, my mom, said to those young people gathered as uh, counselors at summer camp, it is our job description as Christians, as followers of Jesus, as the people of God, it is our job description to be the one who comes alongside for each other when we are called. That's how we see Jesus. That's how we experience God in each other in the community. We know that we are not abandoned or orphaned because of the relationship we experience, the, re the relationship we have with God that we experience through the community with each other. And it is also our job description to bring that relationship with God into the world and to show up as the ones who come alongside when we are called. To make known to a world that God has not abandoned us. God has not orphaned us. That there are those who will advocate, who will help, who will mediate, who will come alongside when called. There's plenty of people calling out in the world right now. There's plenty of people in need of advocates and helpers and mediators and counselors. Early on in this pandemic, I was hearing folks say things like, this virus is the great equalizer where all communities are being leveled and whether you're rich or poor or black and white, we're all in this thing together and we're all experiencing this the same way. And it hasn't taken very long at all for us to recognize and name that that's not true. We know that, as always, there are communities and people who are left behind and left out and forgotten about now more than ever. We know that this pandemic is hitting communities of color the hardest. We know that there are people in need of advocates. I read about a Lutheran church in New York City, St. Peter's uh, Evangelical Lutheran in Manhattan, uh, ELCA, uh, Spanish-speaking congregation, where the pastor has had to bury 40 members of his congregation because of COVID-19. And he estimates that out of his 400 member congregation, something like 35 or 40% of them are infected with the virus. And why is grief and despair and death visiting that particular congregation so disproportionately more than ours or so many others? It's because that community of Latino people disproportionately make up the um, vocations that have been deemed essential, meaning they're people that have to keep showing up for work in delivery jobs and uh, helping keep hospitals and nursing homes running and grocery stores and sanitation and the things that we count on but that are putting them at risk and causing them to suffer and die disproportionately. That's what it's taking for our society to keep running. And those are people who need an advocate, who are calling out. Communities of color are calling out as we see more senseless death and racially motivated killings. People in poverty, people who are hungry are calling out. It is our job description to be the ones who come alongside when we are called. And we can do that because we have not been abandoned. We have not been orphaned. We have a counselor 
in the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. May we come alongside when we are called. Amen. Thanks for being with us in worship today. Our worship continues on our regular Zoom call. We're using the same link and password as we have throughout this whole time. So uh, use that. If you don't have it, send us a message and we can get it to you. And uh, we will join each other on Zoom at 12 p.m. noon. So if you're watching this video live on Sunday, May the 17th, then we invite you to Get on our Zoom call at 12 p.m. Uh, where we'll share testimony from where we've experienced God, where we have seen the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, come alongside us. Um, we will pray together and we'll share in Holy Communion. So you are invited and uh, until we see you next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Oh, oh, oh.